Uh, yeah, that stinks a bit. But uh, a lot will actually depend on how the judges interpret this kind of thing. Indeed. Well, there should be more bad breath, considering it is Dobbin Bad Breath Week. Maybe we wouldn't have to worry about these affairs. Andrew, are you one to subtly offer a mint if someone's had a bit too much garlic, or do you just move away as soon as possible? Uh, why are you talking to me? Why are you talking to me, Carl? <laughs> Look, no, uh, you know, I, I'm one of these that uh, just grin and bear it, you know, try and shuffle backwards a bit. But And we'll have more on Dobbin Bad Breath Week after the news, sport and weather. Don't go anywhere. It's nine past eight now. Well, they're the words you only hear from your best friend or your worst enemy. You've got bad breath. Well, this week is National Dob in Bad Breath Week. And when we're all encouraged to be cruel, to be kind and be honest about halitosis. So we sent our own Mike Dalton to a bad breath expert to hear the awful truth. It is regularly top of the pops in top turn-offs. And most of us don't have the heart to tell those who suffer from bad breath. Except for this man. Meet Jeff. Say hello, Jeff. Dr Jeff Spicer is a dentist, but now spends most of his time dealing bad with breath. sufferers of halitosis. Bad breath being bacteria breaking down proteins. You have coatings in your mouth like plaque on your teeth, coating on your tongue every day that are building up and if you don't remove those coatings those proteins are broken down probably number one cause in australia is people not cleaning their tongue surface right after that it will be people that have a lot of protein in their diets people that like the cheeses and their milks those things break down to bad breath within hours and he says medicines can play a negative role as well seven out of the ten top prescription medicines you know your heart medicines your blood pressure medicines your antidepressants all those things uh, antihistamines for allergies all those things will dry your mouth out increase your bad breath increase throat mucus at the back of your throat increase bad breath gases the doc is one of the few in australia to test breath Good. using a gas chronometer that machine will tell us in parts per billion not million parts per billion of gas of the different bad breath compounds so we can see if a gas is from an unhealthy situation or a healthy situation one patient literally blew it off the charts he probably would find himself offensive because you can't smell your own bad breath but if you leave the room and come back in you can smell the breath and that odor would have been in the room for 10 minutes after he had left Cases like this are very severe. These people live with it every single day and this doesn't matter whether they clean their teeth, if they use mouthwash or whatever, they cannot fix that problem up without seeing a, a breath specialist. The chronometer can detect over 300 gases, as our volunteer Melissa discovered. Have you been chewing gum in the last half hour or so? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I right. forgot. Well, interesting. Okay, it's reading on the machine that you've got some sort of flavouring in your mouth, but it's not going to cover up any sort of bad breath gas. That's going to show up anyway. But Mel need not worry. Congratulations, Melissa. According to the graph, your breath's in a coma. And there can be other triggers for having a mouth like a cocky's cage. So what we find here is that stress is one of the factors in bad breath and a lot of people that actually come to the dentist tend to get quite stressed and dry up their saliva and have instant bad breath. How are you going at the moment, Mike? Mate, I stick like a tip. Okay, so Mike, open wide and come on, come on, be brave, be brave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bad look, Mike. Oh dear, we need to talk to you, I think.